day. Well, today's the day. Remember I was telling you, you would have a shortcut that would help you to be able to write electron configurations? Well, you made it. So, at the end of this video, you will be able to write electron configurations for elements and monatomic ions, write noble gas abbreviations using previous electron configuration objectives, classify elements based on their outermost electron configuration, and obtain the amount of valence electrons from an electron configuration. So, in order to do this, you will need a brand new shiny periodic table and four different colored markers. And then what we would do in class is label it together. So, here's your periodic table. The first thing that you want to do is select a colored pen. It's up to you. And what you're going to do is start labeling on the left-hand side 1s, 2s, 3s. You get the idea. Then you want to take a second colored pen. And you're going to want to label 2p, 3p, 4p, so on and so forth. Take your third color and then take your fourth color. Well, this is what is so cool about the periodic table. So, the periodic table can give you clues as far as how to write the electron configurations. And this is why the periodic table is arranged the way it is. So what you are going to do is allow each box to represent an electron. And then you're going to read just like you read a sentence from left to right. So let's say, for example, I wanted you to write the electron configuration for nitrogen. What you would do is you would start by reading 1s, 2, and then 2s, 2, and then 2p, 1, well, whoops, 2p, 1, 2, 3. And so that would be the configuration. So you're letting each box represent a single electron, and then you're reading it just like you read a sentence. So that would be for nitrogen. Let's try chlorine. So as I mentioned, it would be 1s, 2, and then 2s2, and then it would be 2p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then it would be 3s2, and then 3p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so that would be the configuration. So you're not stopping to read until you've reached the element that you're trying to write the configuration for. Let's try a bigger one. So ruthenium, RU, is right here. So if I kind of back up a little bit so that you can see the whole thing, it would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d, and then you would count 1, 2, 3, right? And you would say, oh, d can hold 10. Well, these are 10 boxes. And then it would be, again, 4p6, and I'm going to keep going so I know where ruthenium is. And then it would be 5s2, and then 4d, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that would be your configuration for ruthenium. See how easy that is? So you don't need that actual handout that has you drawing the arrows from energy level to energy level, because all you really need is the periodic table. So at this point, you really just need to know how to label the periodic table so that you can read it. So this lesson gets even better because now we're going to learn how to write abbreviations because that's a lot to write out. So noble gases, if you recall, are located in group 18 of the periodic table. So that last group all the way to the right. They include helium, neon, argon, xenon, krypton, radon, and UUO. You pick the closest noble gas to the element you are writing the configuration for that comes before that element. So I'll illustrate this because it is kind of hard to understand. So for example, if you were to write the configuration for potassium, the closest noble gas without going over the number of electrons that potassium has is argon. So what you do is you write the configuration for um, the noble gas abbreviation for potassium by putting argon in brackets 
and that takes care of 18 electrons. And then by writing 4s1, that takes care of the 19 electrons that potassium needs. If you do it for magnesium, the closest noble gas to magnesium without going over the number of electrons is neon. Neon has a total of 10 electrons. You can't go to argon because that has 18. So you would put neon in brackets for its 10 electrons, and then you would write 3s2 for two more. And then finally, you can also do it for larger elements like BK. So for BK, the closest noble gas without going over is radon. But this one's a little tricky because if you notice, you'll have to go to 7s2 and then go down into the F block. So be really, really careful because you do need to make sure that you have that F block in there. Here's another aspect of this. So you can also write electron configurations for ions. So you may remember that electrons um, can be gained or lost, and when that happens, you formed an ion. So elements will tend to lose or gain enough electrons so that they have the same number of electrons as a noble gas. And you may remember the reason why is because those noble gases have a very stable arrangement of electrons. So if two atoms have the same number of electrons, they are said to be isoelectronic with each other. So if I were to ask you to write the electron configuration for these ions, so oxygen with a minus two charge, which is the oxide ion, what you would do is you would say, okay, this indicates that oxygen gained two electrons. So you're really writing the electron configuration for the element um, neon, even though oxygen didn't become neon by gaining those two electrons, it still has the same amount of electrons as neon and therefore is said to be isoelectronic. And as I mentioned, and this is a common mistake, just because they have the same electron configuration doesn't mean they're the same exact element. They behave chemically similar but they are not the same. So for example, let's have you write the electron configuration for these ions. Let's say rubidium with a plus one charge. This would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, and 4p6. Again, for this one, the plus one indicates that rubidium lost an electron. And so that's why you wanna go back up and see which noble gas that corresponds to. So we would say that rubidium is isoelectronic with krypton because it has the same number of electrons as krypton. So here's another example. If you're given the electron configuration the charge, give the ion. So for example, if you have um, an ion that has a plus two charge, what that indicates is that this is the electron configuration for the element that has already lost those two electrons. So what that means is that there must have been two electrons already like there must have been electrons that were already in here. So the element that would lose two electrons to have the same amount of electrons as neon would have to be magnesium. And so it would be magnesium with a plus two charge. Because if you remember, neutral magnesium has 12 electrons, but when it loses two, which means by that plus two charge, it then has 10. So again, if you have this configuration and this ion has a minus three charge, this minus three charge is factored in to this configuration already. So what that means is this configuration has three more electrons than it really should if it were the neutral atom. So you're really looking for the element that ends in 3p3. And so that would correspond to phosphorus or the phosphide ion. And so that's how you know that this has to be the particular element. The last part is talking about valence electrons. So when we talk about valence electrons, these are the most important electrons when it comes to bonding, because these are the electrons that are located in the outermost energy level. To count the number of valence electrons, you have to look at the electron configuration and then find the highest numbered energy level in the entire configuration. Then you'll have to add those electrons together. So for example, if I said, how many valence electrons are in each of the following? For potassium, this is the configuration. Notice if you look at this entire configuration, 4s1 
is the highest numbered energy level, which indicates that these are the electrons, again, that are located outside. So the, in the fourth energy level, there's only one electron out there. So that means that potassium would have only one valence electron. Let's do it for cobalt. So cobalt, if you look at this entire configuration, the highest numbered energy level is four again. So notice, fourth energy level is the valence shell, and there are two valence electrons for this as well. This would be the configuration for neon. As I mentioned, you have to find the highest numbered energy level, but you also have to add those electrons together. So that's why you would say this is the second energy level is the highest energy level, and then two plus six gives you a total of eight valence electrons for neon. So that was a lot of information for electron configurations, and they can give you a lot of information. So hopefully that you found that helpful. Um, remember to do your homework so that you can practice and ask good questions in class if you have them. Thank you so much for watching.